Hello everybody, welcome to Rimac Automobili. I've started this journey 10 years ago, believing that electric powertrains can make for better sports cars. Our mission is to make electric cars fun, exciting and fast. Today, we are over 1,000 people and we are here at one of our locations just outside of Zagreb in Croatia. And this is what we have been working on day and night for the last four years to create the best electric hypercar. At the beginning of the project, we set ourselves really high targets. Global homologation, fastest acceleration of any car, most powerful production car ever. Lots of features and functionalities like the driver coach, autonomous driving features, ergonomy and comfort in the car, making it usable not just to sit in the garage but actually that people can enjoy it. And anybody who has ever done a development project know how it starts. You start big with lots of ambition and as you get uh, running out of time and money, you drop features and make your job easier. I'm very proud that we nailed pretty much everything and even overachieved on some of our targets. One of the things that makes this car very special is that everything has been developed and designed specifically for this car. There is no carryover from our previous car or any other cars. Everything is custom developed for this car by our team here. We built three generations of prototypes, experimental prototypes, validation prototypes and pre-series cars. These are two of many validation prototypes, most of which are crashed for homologation certification purposes. We are really proud of the result and think we have something very special, so we want to share it with you. So here it is, the Nevera, finally. For me, it's exactly what I wanted. When I'm looking at it now, it's what I was looking forward so many years. But uh, could you tell us a little bit how you came up with the design concept? Well, the initial idea with the brand and for, the, for our hypercars, electric hypercars, uh, was born more than 10 years ago. So we wanted something that is elegant, compact and timeless. Because this car also has much more power, uh, we wanted it to be more vigorous, more modern, of course, and more athletic. So here we have lots of air intakes in the front, air intakes in the side, and maybe something that's important to explain is that it's a separate powertrain system in the front with a separate cooling system and separate powertrain system in the rear with its own cooling system in the rear. So you had to get a lot of air around the car to cool the rear powertrain, right? Yeah, the most crucial thing was to set up the front correctly and to have everything dictated by the battery because to cool down the battery is the hardest thing. Uh, the powertrain itself is very efficient, yeah, so it doesn't generate too much uh, heat, but the battery is like the biggest radiator we had to integrate. Which is this one in the middle and getting the air out here. A exactly, so the battery has the best airflow and has the, has the cleanest air and everything is of course uh, then also regulated by this flap that moves up and down and also depending on, on how much you push the throttle and how much you extract uh, electricity from, from the battery uh, and how much it actually then heats up is then regulated by this so uh, you don't have always the best airflow but also sometimes the most efficient airflow if you want to extend the range. Then on the sides here you have radiators for the motor and inverter in the front but they are directly in the airflow but don't generate that much power because the let's say majority of the power comes from the rear powertrain. So how was it to channel the air through the side of the car? So part, part of the air that feeds the rear uh, radiators goes already through here, but is extracted then behind the rear wheel. And then this, this air here is mixed again then with the clean air that comes from the side and then is fed into this intake. This intake, as you can see, is very prominent yeah, and is dictated by these two feature lines that are double curved and point towards uh, the cravat. And our cravat is uh, a very uh, prominent and very proud feature of, of our heritage and, and our home country. The cravat has, uh, well, the cravat is a, as some would say, a Croatian invention. Uh, and it originates in the 17th century when there was still wars in Europe and Napoleon would uh, attack here and there. And then he would uh, meet 
Croatian uh, soldiers, and the Croatian soldiers had this uh, special scarf that they would not uh, in a Croat way. Yeah? And he would call this uh, then Kravat. Yeah? And that's the necktie we know today. That's the necktie we know today, yeah. So it's an homage to Croatia. Exactly. Rather than just using uh, colors and, uh, and the squares that we know from everywhere else, we, we decided to do it a little bit uh, more uh, elegant. And to make it not just for Croatian customers, but also worldwide, we have many country flags that can be configured uh, in the colors here on the, on the necktie, connecting the Croatian origin of the car with the customers that will be worldwide. Exactly. Yeah, it also has integrated lights that show the charging status or the driving mode you're currently in, especially when you come to a track, then this can be activated. And also, yeah, guides the air into where it's uh, the most critical for the rear power train. So all the air that gets fed in here goes out through, through a big channel here and is extracted here. And just like we have on the front, the spoiler also dictates how much air you extract here. So when the spoiler is down, the airflow here is restricted, but when the spoiler is up and even tilted, it generates even more under pressure here, so it pulls even more air out. So also this is a really uh, cool combination of two functions to improve the efficiency and the aerodynamics. So we have a very usable trunk for that kind yes. of car. And I think- 100 liters. 100 liters, which is pretty, pretty good. And we have uh, something that dictated the design a lot, which is the door. Uh, because we wanted to have a very easy uh, egress and ingress uh, to and out of the car uh, to have it uh, also for, for bigger people very easy to get in and out and then have a very comfortable seating. One key ingredient for a successful hypercar is of course the ingress-egress. You see other cars where people rather look foolish so we wanted to avoid that so when you open the door you know not only you lift up the the sill with it so you can step in but also you have lots of space around the head so you can get in and out really really elegantly yeah? and I would say like this is this is one of the biggest doors and also when it opens it transforms the car you know the cars all of a sudden it takes it a completely different shape so we have quite a lot of space very generous even for somebody who's taller can you just explain some key features of Diano? we have such a unique powertrain and also unique opportunities to configure it in a, in a completely new way, like no car before. Uh, we, the idea was that we put everything that is uh, important for driving in the, in the primary zone, which is, which is at the same height as the steering wheel, and we uh, generated the idea of the knobs. And you have here knobs where you calibrate the powertrain, not just that you switch between the modes, but you can also individually change all your setups between the modes and customize it to your liking. We, we didn't want to have everything on the touchscreen like many are doing now. The touchscreen for us is quite secondary. The primary functions, as you said, Adriano, here like pure mechanical knobs and, and switches to control the most important things and to have a physical interaction with the car and to feel like you are really changing something because changing the modes here or changing the torque distribution front to rear and these kind of things, you really change the character of the car. What we also have here is two cameras. One watching the driver, which can be used to authenticate uh, the driver and uh, enable the driver to, to drive. The other one is the action camera, which watches what the driver does and watches outside so we don't want our customers to go on a track and have to think about GoPros and charging them and where to put them and so on. The car comes already with it, along with all the telemetry data, all of the important information that we get from all the vehicle systems. You can record what you are doing and very quickly use the video to upload it to your social media or whatever you want. So we wanted to make very integrated and seamless and very easy to use for, for the modern generation, which also wants uh, to post about things they use, uh, they do with the car. And uh, not only practical things, but also luxurious and really precious materials uh, we put where, where they matter. So we have um, leather, carbon, alcantara, uh, aluminum parts. So I think, Adriano, we achieved what we wanted, which is a hypercar for the road, which has really high performance, but also is a pleasure to drive and use on the road. Yes, including good visibility, high-tech materials, and a really comfortable seating position.
I personally can't wait to see how the customers will configure their cars and then seeing the cars rolling off from here and going from Croatia to around the world to all of our customers everywhere.